Loveland and the beer industry in itself is a really great community to be a part of. We're all friends. We all kind of hang out and communicate with each other and kind of realize that we all had the same freak out moment of, I can't lay off my staff again. I can't close my doors. We may not reopen. And yeah, we were all panicking. And when we realized we were all panicking, um, we kind of decided that there needed to be something done. What's happening under executive orders for what we call emergency orders is destroying small businesses. It was so encouraging to see a group of restaurants and small businesses in Loveland the other week say, we're going to stand together and defy these closure laws. Among those leaders was this wonderful, wonderful lady, Miss Harrington. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Morgan, um, tell me about Grimm Brothers. This is, this is... This is your baby. What is it? Well, it's a, it's a brewery out of Loveland, and um, it was started by my husband and his, at the time, uh, co-founder, Aaron Heaton, um, and they w met in Homebrew Club and, <laughs> you know, had met a very... Yeah. <laughs> See, men don't do book club. They do Homebrew right. Club. That's, that's, that's great. <laughs> Um, and yeah, they hit it off and each of them had the perfect strengths for opening up a, a small brewery and tap room and, and now we're almost 10 and a half years old. And just to make it clear, uh, you're a publicly traded corporation owned by stockholders throughout the world. You're part of a national chain of Grimm Brothers. Uh, this is a big operation with a lot of political sway. Oh, that's the dream, isn't it? Um, no, it's owned by five people and run by five owners and five employees. And no, we are not. This is national. the definition of a mom and pop operation. Yeah. And the what's so frustrating for me is the big chains, the big you know, well, whether it's Olive Garden or or Macaroni Grill or whatever, they they know how to do the work to get their PPP money to get all that grant money. Uh, they've they've got lawyers. They've got this. They've got that. The group up in up in um, up north in Weld County and you're in uh, Larimer County. These are these are small businesses. This is these are people who have their homes up for collateral to make these businesses run. Uh, and so when this order came from your local Department of Health, saying we're going to change you from 50% capacity indoors to no percent capacity indoors, especially as winter's hitting, um, this pretty much closed you down, didn't it? Uh, yeah, it, it would have. In the beginning, it would have sh uh, shut us down completely because we don't have patio space. Um, we have a sidewalk. And so <laughs> we... Um, and every time I drink <laughs> on the sidewalk, people seem to get right. mad at me. But if you do that in uh, Denver... There's a, you're just homeless. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, um, and we don't want our patrons to be, be homeless. confused with the homeless. Um, but we, we were only allowed to use our parking lot space um, on the weekends. I know that the city and the state have done um, a great job expanding the patio space for restaurants and, and businesses that are on public property. We operate on private property and have an HOA. So... We would have been open two days a week, and that wouldn't be enough can't, to. Can't do it. Yeah. So under the the new, they jumped the, the county jumped from this, uh, level two, which they say is yellow. Mm -hmm. Forget level three, right to level four. Close it down. Nobody's allowed inside. You can do some takeout. Um, um, how did all these businesses get together in Loveland? And last I heard, there was. It started out with like 78 of them that came together and said, no, we're, we're not doing this. We need to stay alive. We need to pay our employees. Um, uh, it, it, what's so wonderful is that the civil disobedience is going to work, paying your taxes, and trying to compete in a wildly competitive marketplace to stay alive. That's your civil disobedience. You're not tearing down statues. You're not setting things ablaze. You're actually creating stuff, jobs, income, tax revenue, and most importantly, beer. Yes. So how did you all get together? Um, well, I, Loveland and the beer industry in itself is a really great community to be a part of. We're all friends. We all kind of hang out and communicate with each other and kind of realize that we all had the same freak out moment of, 
I can't lay off my staff again. I can't close my doors. We may not reopen. And yeah, we were all panicking. And when we realized we were all panicking, um, we kind of decided that there needed to be something done about this because the state was not going to come in and do anything. The county wasn't doing anything. Our city wasn't doing anything except for, oh, it's okay. You guys can shut down for an indefinite amount of time and you'll be fine in the end. You'll be fine. Um. All right. So what was so surprising for me in this tale was how the, the elected people in your community uh, switched their tune so quickly and supported you. Now, Justin Smith, who is the Larimer County Sheriff, said, we're not enforcing this, this. Um, if I understand right, the, the police department said, we're not enforcing this. Your city council said, we want these guys to stay open. We support them. Am I getting that somewhat right? Close to right? Um, well, yeah, there, there were some, uh, some people that came out right away in support yeah. of what we were doing. Um, our, our two senators and our three representatives had a Both bipartisan, Republicans yeah, and, and Democrats. bipartisan letter that they drafted on their own and submitted by that afternoon after we first um, had our press release. Um, that stuff was amazing. Um, the health department started working with us only days afterwards and before Thanksgiving. And Wait, t time out there. Time yeah. out there. All right, because I'm trying to figure this one out. So the state recommends that all the county health departments jump to, to red. Your Larimer County Health Department says, well, we better get in line, puts it out to red. You guys stand up with the support of sheriffs, councilmen, elected state senators and state representatives, chief of police. I mean, everybody, the Chamber of Commerce, everyone stands up and goes, yes, this is right. And then this miracle happens. The, the Department of Health, which you're trying to work with, finally starts talking with you and says, yeah, we're going to try to find a way to, to keep you open. Yeah. I've got that right. Yeah. That, that is amazing. And were you working out something? Yes, um, there was um, a, a lot of discussion about this Mesa County Five Star Program. Um, and we kind of went about creating our own version of that, and it's called the Level Up Program. And um, it, it incorporates a lot of the stuff from the Mesa County one, and then uh, they asked for direct feedback from some of our business owners that uh, were really wanting to see this happen. Uh, so that it fit for our community, not every so community. Is folks same. might not know what the Five Star Program is. And, and so Mesa County, when these orders came back earlier, said, we're not doing it. We're coming up with our own thing. And they called it the Five Star Program. And Governor Polis said, that's a great program. So those restaurants on the other side of the mountains are open because they, they came up with their own thing. Um, and it looks like you guys are working with your health department, coming up with your own thing. My God, this is a beautiful thing. You stood up to the Leviathan, you took on Goliath, and you won completely. Congratulations, you're open today. Business is flying. I've never done better. I am thrilled for you. Congratulations, standing up and winning. Yeah, that's unfortunately not how all things work, is it? In a perfect world? That would be great. We don't live in a perfect world. So while we are still working very hard to do all of this, um, in the meantime, we were told by the Liquor Enforcement Division and um, the State Health Department that if we did not comply, we would lose our license. This is the story. This is yeah. the story. So um, the liquor license... I hear is important to a brew pub, but I, I'm sure you could survive without a liquor license. No. You sell nachos. <laughs> we, we are first and foremost there to brew beer and sell beer. And in our tap room, it's part of it, but we have a wide distribution network also. If we lost our liquor license, we would shut down permanently. End of story. And I want to be clear, this didn't come from your local county liquor board or liquor enforcement. Uh, that county was working 
um, with you. Correct. This was the long arm of the law coming from Denver, reaching all the way up to Loveland. So help me understand this. I understand um, they could pull your liquor license because I understand you guys serve a lot of 10-year-olds doing birthday parties. Uh, they like stout. You make a great stout. And, and so, therefore, that is a legitimate liquor violation. Yes. You should have your liquor license pulled by the state, if not the county, for that. Yeah. All right. Have you been serving underage? No. We have not it? violated any of the liquor laws. So... The liquor laws you haven't violated, yet they're pulling, threatening to pull your liquor license. And I think what, yeah. what I've come to understand much better throughout all this is how remarkably dependent restaurants are on the liquor license. They cannot survive. And they cannot survive without good weekend traffic, Friday and Saturday nights. Yeah. They can't survive on half capacity during... It, it's a slow death and maybe a fast death, but the quickest death is pulling your liquor license. Yes. All right. Um, do you have any health code violations? No. No? You got, you got mice running around, not spitting in people's food, <laughs> you're, wash, you're washing your hands, all this stuff? Uh, yeah, we actually go above and beyond what is required at the level we were operating at, and even now, we're, we still have things implemented that aren't required in Level Red. Um. All right, let me go off, <laughs> because this just infuriates me. So, we in America believe in equal protection under the law. It's one of the principles of what makes us great, that even the president is not above the law. We, we uh, Nixon found that out, Trump might find that out. Um, but here, Mesa County figured out a way to do this, and the governor says, I like that. Of course, it's, it's a four-hour drive over the Continental Divide to, to get their guys over there. But in Loveland, he sends his liquor goons out to Loveland. That's only an hour away. That's easier to do, uh, to threaten to pull your livelihood. Uh, so everyone in your community from the city council down to uh, the county commissioners to the sheriffs, the law enforcement, are working with you. And then the state comes out and says, we're going to crush you. So what happened to this great band of people standing up saying, we're going to you know, come for us, you're coming for us all? How quickly did that break apart? Um, actually, everybody's still standing together in a community sense around this this whole topic. Um, and uh, with us having the Level Up program in the governor's office and having communication through our county, um, we're all a little confused because... <laughs> um, <laughs> What? Mixed <laughs> signals from, from the government? Well, yes. We understood that it was a rogue agency that um, was sort of trying to bring the hammer down on us and ultimately derail what we're trying to do, especially with the governor's office. Um, and then recently, um, so our building is in a warehouse district, which is also why we have to deal with an HOA. Um, but we have 12-foot-tall garage doors and 18-foot-tall ceilings in our tap room. Garage doors open all the way. We were under the impression that that's two open sides. Our health department was working with us and said, yeah, that's you've got better ventilation than a tent outside does. Um, yeah. And, then, and most importantly, you're closer to the beer. Yes. And then we get notified by, the, um, by our health department that this State Liquor Enforcement Division and the CDPHE has said that that doesn't count and we're not allowed to operate in, how, in our how, space. How, how are you supposed to work through all this? All right, so right now, it seems to me, as we're taping this, and, and uh, when this airs, you know, three minutes later, it could be completely different. <laughs> um, but the state has successfully scared everyone into submission because you're talking about your homes that you put up for collateral. You're talking about uh, everything you've worked for. And I know a lot of people outside, you know, and I'm, I'm one of them. Go, no, stand up. 
don't do it. Stand up, stand up. Yeah, give them the middle finger. Uh, but when they waive that liquor license, tell me why is it so hard then to stand up and defy them? Um, well, for, for most of us, again, mom and pop places, yeah, we have our house on the line. And I've got two kids, and I'm, I can't take that risk. I would love to be able to take that risk. If I was in my 20s, I probably would take that risk if I didn't have anything really substantial on the line. Do you really like your kids? Uh, I actually do. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> disappointing. Yeah, uh, yeah and I, I know what you mean. You've got, you've got your entire livelihood, your house, your kids' future, perhaps yeah. jail time, all in, on the line here. And it's all because the state government decided to roll into Loveland just like the Soviets rolled into Hungary to squash a, re a rebellion. And um, we can't sit idly by why this is happening. I mean, I can imagine the fear in the liquor departments um, in the states. Oh, my God, if they do it in Loveland, other cities might safely open and keeping people's jobs going, paying taxes, keeping people off of unemployment. <laughs> the madness of it all would be terrible. Yeah. Um, um, do you feel optimistic that, that there could be a solution here in, in time to save you from going under? Um, I am. I'm our county and our city, especially um, last night. So if I have bags under my eyes, I apologize. I was in a city council meeting until after two o'clock in the morning um, <laughs> because they're they're trying to roll out a um, a way to keep our businesses from going under while we're waiting to work with the governor's office like we've been able to work with our our county government and our city government. Um, I mean, for, for me to see what happened on our, our local level so quickly and efficiently, and I really, really hope that we can do the same thing with our state government because well, I've seen well, it only, happen. The only way that's going to happen is if people decide to make a stink about this and hold Polis' administration liable and accountable for putting good people out of, out of work uh, here, but not in Grand Junction. It is insane. You're heroic. Thank you for, for doing what you're doing. And by the way, if after you finish you know, dealing with the paperwork, the PPP, the grants, uh, the, the city council meetings, uh, the meetings with everybody else, fighting with the, the governor, doing media like this, doing all these things, maybe you'll have some time after that to try to run a business and, and make, it, make it not sink. Morgan, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Insane. You're heroic. Thank you for, for doing what you're doing. And by the way, if after you finish you know, dealing with the paperwork, the PPP, the grants, uh, the, the city council meetings, uh, the meetings with everybody else, fighting with the, the governor, doing media like this, doing all these things, maybe you'll have some time after that to try to run a business and, and make, it, make it not sink. Morgan, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button too. You don't want to miss a single show.